cowboy fans and YouTubers. It's that VA Dallas Cowboy fan coming back at you. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting down below. I do these videos for me and you. And they're a little therapeutic, you know? And after a game like yesterday, somebody needs a little therapy. These cowboys can give you a bit of a heart attack, you understand? And I think in the long run, it's finally hitting Jerry Jones. Uh, hence his uh, words to reporters last night after the game that Jason Garrett is definitely not looking like the coach he thought he would be. Um, I mean, he kind of threw the whole coaching staff under the bus. I mean, if you saw the game. You saw the game. The whole game, I, I'm talking to my wife and I'm telling her that if we don't score first or score a touchdown, this game is over. There's no way in that kind of weather and what was going on that the Cowboys were going to win if we didn't score first or score a touchdown. And what happens? We lose by four. I mean, you know, player execution can be bad, but coaching is way, way worse. Um, the special team gaffes are atrocious. That's, I'm confused as how Brett Maher keeps his job. I'm confused at how the special teams coach, uh, O'Quinn keeps his job. Uh, I mean, it's freaking ridiculous. There were no adjustments made when you saw everything going on right in front of you live in real time, how you don't adjust. Uh, the defense played their hearts out. They tried, you know, there were some plays where they could have gone, uh, gotten the Patriots off the field on third down, but they blew it. But that's okay. They had the bend don't break philosophy in that game. And they tried. The offense couldn't muster much. But when they did, we started getting phantom tripping calls. Now, everybody can hate on the Cowboys and say we're whining and boo-hoo. Officiating had nothing to do with it. But there's been way too many incidences in a lot of our past years where these referees are making up calls that you've never heard of or you might have heard of once in 20 years and yet we seem to be the only teams that's getting these calls and when you have the whole world watching in slow motion about a tripping call that <laughs> clearly wasn't even close to a tripping call uh yeah I'm pretty sure that the NF the referees are blind as bats. Uh, we don't want to say that the NFL's rigged. We don't want to say they're cheating, but there's clearly, clearly something going on to where human error is inexcusable in these common sense instances. And I understand you don't want to go to replay on everything, but when there's something egregious like that and you were way off base for throwing that flag, especially in crucial moments in these games like this, you shouldn't be throwing the flag. You should just let these teams be playing it out. I don't know why referees are even interfering unless somebody's getting their head knocked off. But that's the way it is. Y'all can say we're crying, but the whole world can see that the Cowboys are getting screwed in a lot of these refereeing calls. It's it's crazy. Um, I, for one, still haven't heard word about who was seen at Cowboys practice last week on the roof of the facility across from practice. Uh, everybody joked about it, tweeted about it, but I didn't see anybody actually explain who the person was that was on the roof. And a lot of people like to joke and say it was the Patriots cheating again, but you don't know. Because nobody ever explained what it was after it showed up. They just let it fade out of it, your memory. <laughs> uh, we didn't really get out coached except for the special teams play because both quarterbacks had sloppy play. Uh, the running games were definitive. Uh, the only reason they even got a touchdown is because of the special teams play. So, you know, you can't be, I don't know, as a coach, how many more games does it take for your team to lose by two points, three points, four points in a season before you finally get the balls to be aggressive 
and start going for touchdowns when you clearly know that you need the points. It's starting to be ridiculous how you can be that conservative every single freaking time. You never go for it. You're scared. You play scared, and, you know, the haters come out and say Dak Prescott's scared. I don't know how he can be scared. I mean, he's trying to do everything in his power to win. But when you're predicated to calling a certain style in a certain way, uh, because we're a run for, well, it's supposed to be a run first defense, a lot of offense, and you run the strong side, which is behind the right tackle. Now, hate me if I'm wrong, but Lord knows how many times the grass was greener on the left side of the freaking line, and Zeke and Pollard never went that way. They all seem to flow in the same direction that the defense is going and getting stuffed. They're barely getting one to two yards when clearly the left side of the field, there's nobody there but a tight end and a corner, and then it's off to the races because the whole defense went the same way you did. But they don't see it. I don't know. Maybe it's a thing that when they send in the call to go right, y'all just go right. Y'all don't even think about going any other direction. Uh, you know, I don't want to get too much into the game because it's an embarrassing loss. I'm sick and tired of talking about embarrassing losses. I'm sick and tired of talking about referees. I'm sick and tired of talking about bad coaching. Uh, if I'm an NFL owner and I see this constantly, over and over, and I see the only thing that has not changed in a decade of being called America's team, no, you're not, because you haven't won anything in 20-something years, and I've overturned the whole entire roster i've overturned pretty much all the coaches and the only constant here that has remained if not me as a president and gm is the head coach and we still haven't gone anywhere just maybe you want to think about changing the head coach i don't care if you love the guy as a son or not you can't keep having somebody on the team that's not helping you progress any farther than where you've been I mean, those couple years of straight eight and eight should have told you exactly who Jason Garrett is and how he coaches. He can't get you into the playoffs at eight and eight. He couldn't get you past a divisional round when you actually made the playoffs. And and as other YouTubers have already pointed out, handedly, is if you can't win or make it to a Super Bowl in five years of first coaching, you're not going to make it. And this guy has had 10 years. And he's done nothing to show that he can do anything better than what he's done other than shoot ourselves in the foot a new way each and every week. I mean, there should be no kudos for coaching on this squad ever for the rest of this season because these players are the ones that are executing it and making it work and making these coaches look good. The coaches aren't doing squadoosh, in my opinion. I mean, good God. Uh, how many times do we have to go over this, you know? I mean, I enjoy making the videos, but I'm kind of sick and tired of making the same video week after week when we lose. <laughs> that it's the same thing, how we lose every single time. And how many points we seem to be losing by. It's repetitive. And I don't like being repetitive about saying the same things over and over again. Yet here I am doing the same thing again and again. Because this team is that frustrating. They're middle of the road. They got the talent to be a Super Bowl caliber team, but your coaching is below average. And it's funny because after the whole reported thing about Jason Garrett and the uh, Giants, it seems like he's screwing himself over. <laughs> like he really wants out now or something. I don't know, but I don't know. I tried to have a good birthday. I tried to be happy about the Cowboys. You know, it, that's why I don't make instant reaction videos is because they piss me off. If I made a reaction video right after the game, none of my videos would ever make it to YouTube because it'd be profanity laced. And I don't want to be completely profanity laced in my videos, even though I can get there. Uh, yeah, I'm done talking about that on to Buffalo for Thanksgiving. It's a quick turnaround. 
Uh, I can't tell this team what to do or how to do it, but Buffalo has a sneaky good record. Uh, they're going to play up. They're going to play up to us. It's their first time playing against us on the Thanksgiving since 1975, I think. And they definitely have the, all those Super Bowls to remember getting pissed off at us. It may not be the same squad, but it's the same team. Uh, we're the evil empire to everybody. Everybody plays up to us because they want to make a statement, and Cowboys mean statements. Because uh, Lord knows how many people still saying the Jets beat the Cowboys and hanging their hats on that one game. Even though the Jets have beaten other teams, they don't seem to care about that. But we still hold one game division lead over the Eagles. But that's it. The Eagles have absolutely nobody else that's good enough to beat them on their schedule. We are screwed. We have the Rams, Bears, Rams, Bears, Eagles again, Redskins, and Buffalo. And that's our season, folks. <laughs> I mean, all our chances to get those easy wins and get ahead in the uh, rankings are gone. I mean, aside from the Redskins, there's not much you can take away for this season as a guaranteed win almost anymore. Uh, I mean, they blew it. I mean, other than basically the uh, Green Bay game, we've absolutely not lost any games by blowout. We have lost games by two, three, or four points. And out of those three, four point differential games, imagine what our record would be. Imagine that. If we stunk it up against Packers and lost to New England like everybody bet that we would, we would only be, what, seven and two, eight and two? Yeah, about eight and two. Think about that. <laughs> you know? Our record would be just as good as almost everybody else, you know? Eight and two, nine and two. If all we did was take care of business and won those games, we should have won. But instead, we blew it. <laughs> you know, there's nothing we can take away from that. Other than the fact that we're never going to go anywhere as long as Jason Garrett is still head coach in this team. It just doesn't seem feasible that he's going to make any changes. He just, no, he won't. He'll relegate to throwing everybody else under the bus first before he takes any blame. And then you go to the same monotonous uh, press conferences talking about it after the fact. That, oh, well, this executed well, that executed well. At the time, this seemed like a great play. Dude, at the time, it seemed like a great play. You made three, if I'm not mistaken. Three, third, and three. Third and twos. Third and two, you threw it. Incomplete. Third and two, incomplete. Third and two, incomplete. If they weren't incomplete, they we got the yards the game, but then negated everything by a freaking penalty. A fourth and seven. You every one of these you either right, punted yeah. or kicked it. And we ended up losing by those margins. Why that? Hmm? Yeah, that's your old shirt. But, you know, on to Buffalo, Thanksgiving, gobble, gobble. I'll be out of town. Uh, I'll try to make another video before then. If not, I'll try to do something, you know, near game time or something. Uh, there's nothing more I can say about this team. It's really not. We are like Jerry Jones. We are too talented to be this frustrated, you know. And thankfully, the owner sees it. The GM sees it. Hopefully, <coughs> excuse me, by the end of this season, he does something about it, okay? But that's all I got. Hope you have a great Monday. <sighs> you know, we're going to try and make it through this week. It's Thanksgiving, y'all. It's coming up. All right, holiday season. All right, talk to y'all later. Peace.